Uh, I am going to turn the meeting over to Evelyn Minor Lawrence, Director of Human Services, for our next presentation. You are good to go. Thank you, Lona. Okay, so we'll start. Who I have with me today here is I have Erin Knapp, and she is the manager over our administrative services division and oversees our budget. And then I have Eric Machado, who manages our risk and safety division within human resources. Okay, whoops. And Evelyn, if I may, just a little aside. Um, so we have 30 minutes scheduled for you, so about half time for presentation after that. And I'd ask that not only you, but any of our members, when you're speaking, speak directly into the microphone instead of to the side. We sometimes tend to do that, and I'm not saying Evelyn did, but we sometimes tend to do that, and it's much easier in a room this size to be able to hear when people speak directly into the microphone. So thank you, all of you, for that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll start presentation. Aaron. Yes, okay. So the first one slide outlines our major accomplishments. And I'm not going to go through every single one of these because I know if you've seen this in advance, but I will just kind of highlight some of the key um, accomplishments that I'd like to bring to your attention. 2020, of course, was a challenging year for human resources. And I want to just talk about primarily two areas. The um, equal pay has been, uh, as you know, in October of 19, the law was passed and HR has been working very diligently to do the first stage of making sure that the county is in compliance with that law in conducting an equal pay analysis. We have received from the consultant to date a preliminary findings of where we are. Next steps, we've hired a, uh, a new consulting firm that we're working with to now begin to look at all of the root causes of the discrepancies that we have. So this is work that we're continuing to work through now. The um, COVID responses, again, human resources played a, a huge role in responding to the pandemic and several divisions within human resources were impacted as a result of the pandemic. The risk and safety staff working with the EOC throughout, making sure that we're putting in place the appropriate protocols for the county. Our employee and labor relations team at the front end developing policies and protocols for our workforce to follow in order to keep them safe and our benefits leave administration in particular, that group was impacted pretty heavily in addressing leave criteria and getting employees to determine if they're eligible for all of the leave entitlements that they were involved in. So a lot of work in, in that area. Uh, the recruitment, I'm very proud of the work that our recruitment and selection division accomplished this past year. When some jurisdictions were not recruiting, we continued to recruit. We went immediately from a in-person recruitment and selection process to a virtual recruitment process. So we've been able to continue that services moving forward. So those were some of the, the high level highlights. Um, next slide. Good afternoon, my name is Erin Knapp and I'll be addressing the next few slides in our presentation. Um, a note just about the structure of our, of our department. Um, there are three divisions within HR, benefits and wellness, risk and safety, and then the HR division, which includes six distinct HR programs. Throughout the department, we're continuing to focus on the key results measures in our plan. Uh, during the most recent plan review last spring, we refined and identified a number of new results and output measures throughout the department plan. Um, we've identified a few examples on this slide just for your 
your information and kind of the focus and theme among these is that they all really support our primary customer base, which is the group of approximately 300 county managers and supervisors who, who support and manage the entire employee population of the county. So some of these examples and, and the ongoing work, in addition to the work that Evelyn described over the past year related to the pandemic, are really some of the work of implementing a business partner model throughout the department. It began about five years ago when we really pulled that through as, in as many places as we could to support our customer base and understand their business needs and their business. In workforce data management, um, with the county's decision about a year ago to retain PeopleSoft as our system of record for our HRIS system, that team really continues to try to seek ways to capitalize on the technology that we have, improve it, um, help it evolve, and then at the same time streamline our processes so that we can, that we can keep up with those processes and those system improvements and, and serve our customers. In employee and labor relations, um, as Evelyn mentioned, this team has been really tapped and stretched over the past year. And um, in addition to all these new, new issues, they've continued to guide managers and supervisors as they work with their employees, and in particular related to this slide, with navigating the discipline process that managers and supervisors often find themselves in related to employees and performance issues. So um, this helps us, this measures make sure that we're, we're in the loop early on and that we can help guide and kind of approach these situations from a, with a county-wide perspective to kind of minimize our risk and doing, doing the, everything we can. Recruitment, as Evelyn mentioned, they continue to have a heavy, heavy workload and um, you know, kind of continue to try to measure, measure our timelines as well as focus on quality and efficiency. And, Another group that's been really tapped throughout the pandemic, the integrated disability staff managing the leaves and just a huge workload, very complicated issues during the pandemic. And they also continue to improve their, their timelines and the, the flow of communication. Next slide, please. Um, a little more about the uh, financial piece of our, our budget presentation. The overall proposed department budget is slightly over 76 million. The HR programs within the HR division um, are all found within Fund 100, the county's general fund. Uh, benefits and wellness is within the benefit self-insurance fund, which is 760, and risk and safety is in the risk fund, which is 761. From the chart, some takeaways are that really as an internal services department, um, our, our work and services are dedicated to our internal county, county customers and, and we are kind of the official and only provider of those services for, for county departments and employees. Another, another takeaway is that our, our guideline, um, our kind of guiding mandate for HR um, it, are the federal and state employment laws that affect us as an employer and affect our employees. I would also like to make a note just about the, the last column on the chart about the metrics and where we have a range of percentages from 33%, I think, at a low to 100%. And I think this kind of reflects some of the, the work that we did last spring to update our plan. There are some measures that have been in place, in place since the beginning of our plan five years ago and some that are brand new and that we're just starting to get some, some data around. So that, I think is reflected there. Next slide, please. Uh, I just wanted to touch on this slide a little bit about um, our revenues. So in the Human Resources Division, our, our budget is slightly over five million. We're funded through allocations paid by departments. Um, and that's on, a, on an FTE basis and as well as about 1.3 million in general fund support from the general fund. And that, that 1.3 million is divided um, among our HR, six HR programs. The benefits budget makes up 53 million of our department 
budget and risk and safety totals 18 million. Um, I'd like to add a little more about the revenues for, for those two budgets, for the risk and safety and benefits and wellness. Um, in benefits, there's a, a monthly program uh, or benefit administration fee that's received um, based on regular FTE and number of temporaries to cover program administration. And in the risk fund, uh, costs are allocated countywide based on payroll, risk um, industry, industry risk index, and claims history. So that's how we receive allocations within the risk fund. And next slide. Um, overall, our revenues and expenses have remained fairly consistent over the past three years or so. Um, one, one note is that this year there's been a shift in how some of our um, funds in the risk and benefits um, budgets have been reflected. Um, we're greater utilization of contingency and reserves for future expenditures. So it's kind of in line with um, budget guidance and in an effort to be more um, transparent and kind of accurate in what's, what's reflected in those two, two large funds. And then the next slide, I would just add much of this is uh, similar to what we've seen on prior slides, but I would just add that our uh, FTE number of staff within HR is presently 43 and has remained that, that number for the last uh, couple of years. So we've maintained that status quo, kind of despite, despite the heavy workload and uh, especially the challenges of the past, past year. With that, I'll turn it back to Evelyn. Okay. So that takes us to our, our last slide. And again, as you can see, our work doesn't stop in the new fiscal year. Still more work to be done related to equal pay application and compliance. And the work that's going forward, we will be, we will be looking at implementing new business practices around our compensations. We will be looking at creating processes that allow us to monitor compensation activity within the county better. We're in the process of negotiating contracts. So as you know, we have four bargaining units and eight contracts. We've just settled two, so we have six to go. So that's on our radar. Any changes that would be made to our compensation practices, they will also need to be bargained in addition to the successor contract. So any changes that are made in order to make the county, keep the county, or get the county in compliance with the Equal Pay Act will also need to be bargain with the collective bargaining units as well. So that's a big uh, chunk of work for us going forward. Our policies, uh, we're working closely to get all of our policies up to date. We've tried to do this for the last three years and with the workload that we have, we have not been able to uh, do that. So what we've done this past, this fiscal year, is we've actually contracted that work out and we are making progress towards getting our policies up to date in <coughs> compliance, et cetera. Um, our benefits transformation, we're always looking at ways in HR how to be more efficient in order to deliver better services to the departments. A lot of the work, a lot of the business processes within HR, many of them are still done paper and we need to automate a lot of our systems, and that's what we're working towards now. Um, the employee engagement, another um, activity going forward in this new fiscal year. Again, we want to continue to monitor um, the progress that the county is making in order to keep our employees engaged and motivated um, to deliver services for Clackamas County. So those are our primary um, focuses going forward, the highlights. That ends our presentation, and we're open for questions. Thank you very much. And we're going to start with Chair Smith. Thank you, Evelyn, for your um, presentation today and letting us 
be aware of your challenges that this department has faced. Thank you. And being consistent with my questions for other departments, I see you have a line for contingencies, reserve, and future expenditures. Can you explain to me if that's restricted funds? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. On your line for contingency and reserve for future expenditures on page five, are those restricted funds? Okay. Eric, you want to address that? Um, as far as the risk fund, uh, I changed the uh, accounting a little bit this year between the contingency and the reserve line. What I did, and um, for, for those dollars that are our 75th confidence level of future uh, liabilities, so that's the liabilities that our actuary tells us that we need to have uh, dollars to fund um, as of July 1, uh, 2022, so the end of this next budget year is the dollars that I have put into the reserve lines um, now for, for the risk portion of this. Mm -hmm. So that's why there's a fairly significant change in the percentage of, from last year to this year on the, reserving, on the reserve line okay. there. So that's about $8.3 million. Uh, ten point eight on my right. book. Correct, well. but that is all rolled up for the whole department. So, the risk portion of that is about eight point three. And what's the other four? It's the benefits. And so, if we can have Christy come in, I think she we can pull her in via Zoom, and she can respond to Chair Smith's question. I'm bringing her in now. Okay. And while she's while she's coming in, um, uh, Chair Smith, if you want to turn to page seven in their presentation, I think that will help Ms. as Mentoria, well. Ms. Mentoria, it's hard for me to hear what you're saying. Can you can pull you the microphone you? closer? Oh, or yeah. was it? It's on. Oh. Whoever was, was it Elizabeth or Sandra? <clears throat> I can't even tell. For page you. seven. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, so when Krista speaks, you can, you can see the funds. And so what uh, Eric was just speaking to, we have uh, in the benefits column in the self-insured, you'll see there's amounts there, and I'm not particularly, but that's where you're gonna see the breakout um, in the different funds for the contingency and reserve or in the self-insurance and okay, the but risk one, management. One doesn't point to the other. That's nice if you know how the budget's done. I guess my point is, thank you for that. But when I, when I'm, I'm just wanna know what, you know, it's in reserve and expenditures, and the explanation is down here under benefits, wellness, and leave management. Is that what you're directing me to on page seven? Yeah, they're in different funds. Okay, but it doesn't necessarily say that is reserves. I'm just asking the question. Um, I don't know that anybody else beside our finance people or department people would know to make that correlation, which is fine. If you want to do the budget that way, that's fine. Just allow me, you know, just allow somebody to ask the question to get the answer. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Chair Smith. I was just wanting to, while Krista gets on the line, I wanted to show that there are three different funds for the H, for the Human Resources Department. Yes. And so when she comes on to talk to the reserve and contingency, you can see which funds they're going to lie. They're going to okay. be found in. So then, in this particular department, because you do insurance, uh, and I understand that's that's why you know the budget is what it is, and we have risk management. Maybe if we could make an asterisk notes on reserving and expenditures to see page seven and have a corresponding note on page seven, and that would be. Um, more self-explanatory, I think, would be easier for us to follow. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying you should have it or not have it. I'm not, not making any judgments. I'm just asking what it is. Right. And under uh, contingencies, we have 15... Point six million almost, and I'm sure it, the numbers add up if I knew what numbers to add up, which I'm not going to do today, <laughs> because, I mean, yeah, you know, you guys have done that already. I'm just curious. And Evelyn, the reason why I'm curious is because some of our departments that have come forward have zero contingencies. 
because they have no restricted funds. And that's the reason for my question. And you do because of the nature of the type of work you do. And that's totally fine. So I'm just asking for an explanation on that. That's understood. Okay. Yeah. And Ms. Caldwell, I know you have your card up, but I wanted to see if Ms. Montoya has a response for something she had put her put her card up to speak. So Sandra? So yes, I was going to just respond to Chair Smith's um, comment. We do have a report coming to you tomorrow that will break out the contingency and reserve by department and will show which of those are restricted versus non-restricted. So that'll give you a, a much better view of the entire county. Okay. That's great. Good. Thank you. Okay. And Christy we... is online if you'd like her to answer that question. Go ahead, Christy. Yeah. And Sandra, you can go ahead Thank and put your card down. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, share some information. So Chair Smith, I, there are restricted funds in there. Um, and I think that that report that was just referenced is going to be very helpful. But to, just to be specific to what I think I heard you asking, yes, they are dedicated funds under the reserves. The contingency contains funds that are not restricted, uh, speaking from the benefit side of, of the budget. So if it's in that reserves line, it's dedicated, cannot be used for other purposes. So you just said the contingency, contingency was not restricted, but they are targeted for other uses. If Correct. I heard you say that right. Okay. So we have two classific classifications of contingency. We have restricted and then non-restricted other. Am I right on that? Okay. Good. I'm learning every day. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Coldwell? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I want to ask the question that I ask every year because I think it's important um, in a good way because I've seen good results. And that is how closely do the Clackamas County employees reflect the community in terms of diversity? We have those numbers for you. And we have um, waiting in the wings to respond with the stacks is J.J. Peters. Bring him in now. Okay, JJ, you can go ahead and unmute. Good afternoon. So I do not have the information on the, the county as far as the county population, but what I can tell you is we do have encouraging news again this year. So we calculate our workforce um, each September and from September of 2019 to September 2020, we continue to increase uh, the diversity of our workforce and we now have 15.5% of our workforce is people of color compared to last year at the same time, um, I'm sorry, 2019, 14.7%. Uh, so that reflects uh, 316 um, employees that are people of color in our workforce. So um, as I've said in prior years, we're really um, pleased to, that we've been able, despite uh, the pandemic and um, the hiring freeze, to continue to make positive um, progress. It's slow and steady, and we'll continue to partner with our new equity inclusion office to uh, continue to make progress. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to highlight, you know, it's important um, regardless of what community you live in, that your, your public service staff is reflecting that cultural competency, um, it gets at how your recruiting practices are, how your hiring practices are, and how you're able to retain staff. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I don't see any. You have one? Okay, thank you, Mr. Commissioner Show. Go ahead. Does the budget include appropriations for working towards the automated personnel record system you spoke about? And is there state grants available to help pay for that program? Or will, 
or will will there be a need for the general fund to pick up part of that expense? I'm not aware of any state grants that's available to assist in that. Where we are able to try to address those needs is we have a line item in our budget is professional services, and that's where that's where we go to to tax that line item to get the outside support that we need to help us put together um, and address our automation needs. So right now, from our just to give you an example, with the um, equal pay analysis, there was no way that HR could have conducted this work ourselves. We didn't have the capacity to do that. So our professional services budget line item is where we would take took those dollars from in order to hire contractors. We are partnering with um, finance and using a consultant that they have in order to get some leverage to help us with the automation that we need in our classification operations. And, and we're currently Again, we don't really have the full support in our workforce data management to be able to develop automation business processes single, singly on, the, on their own. Yes, but, but in terms of financing for that project, is, is, do you have the money or do you foresee the money coming in the next couple of years? We don't have the money. What we have, is, what we have is in our professional services budget. So we will work within the budget that we have within professional services. But we don't have any additional funds coming in, nor am I anticipating any additional funds, if I'm answering your question correctly. OK. Thank you. All right, thank you. I see no other lights nor cards for questions, so Thank you very much for taking the time to come in and fill us in today. And uh, thanks for what you do for Clackamas County. Yeah.